Uh, the stock market has been a good forecaster uh, from time to time in the uh, past. It also has been a rather poor forecaster occasionally. Hi, I'm Monk, and this is the Monk Way. Let's watch a previously unreleased clip of Warren Buffett as a young man. He was only 32 here, and this clip was only discovered back in 2013. This would be his first recorded interview ever. He was talking about a stock market drop happening around that time. Let's see what we can learn from this, and see if we can apply it to today's overpriced market. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. And check out Monk's Market Mastery below for a complete animated course on the stock market. It's 50% off for the first 20 buyers. I also have links to the best investing apps. We both for swing trading, get two free stocks up to $1,000 for depositing. We also have M1 Finance, allowing you to buy stocks like Amazon for pennies. Links in the description below. Let's start with the interview. It's black and white, and I fixed the quality and the sound, and also added subtitles. We watched the whole thing, and I'll explain exactly what it means. I think the president's action on steel uh, probably had something to do with the timing of the decline, but I don't think it was the uh, the the, uh, the factor which uh, determined the, uh, the amount of the decline. Uh, for some time, stocks have been rising at uh, uh, rather rapid rates. Uh, corporate earnings have not been rising. Uh, dividends have not been increasing. And uh, uh, it's not to be unexpected that perhaps a correction of some of those uh, uh, unusual factors on the upside might occur on the downside. Well, some observers from time to time say that the stock market is a forecaster of events to come. Can you predict or would you care to take a look at what you think this might be forecasting, the decline? Uh, the stock market has been a good forecaster uh, from time to time in the uh, past. It also has been a rather poor forecaster occasionally. Uh, for example, the last four or five years, the stock market has been booming along and uh, presumably forecasting better business, which has really not materialized. Corporate profits are, are not any better than they were five years ago, but stock prices are 50% uh, higher thereabouts. Uh, so maybe the stock market is really uh, correcting a previous incorrect forecast this time rather than making a new correct one. Well, in a nutshell, Mr. Buffett, can you give us uh, your opinion of just exactly what happened? What caused it? Well, there was... Uh, Undoubtedly, some force selling the uh, the week uh, when the stock market hit the news. The previous week, uh, prices had declined about 6% for the week on average. And uh, there was some stock that uh, was forced upon the market, both by margin calls from brokers and uh, uh, some that was uh, forced out by in, in improperly uh, secured bank loans. And this, in turn, set up a self-generating mechanism on the downside for a while, uh, which we may have seen the last of and which we may not have seen the last of. Now let's go over every line he talks about, and see how we can apply it to today, starting with the beginning. I think the president's action on steel uh, probably had something to do with the timing of the decline, but I don't think it was the, uh, the, the, uh, the factor which uh, determined the, uh, the amount of the decline. The interview was referring to a big drop in 1962. There was an over 20% drop during that time. Buffett explains what the president did might be the catalyst to the drop, but didn't dictate how much the market would drop in total. There seemed to be a rise in the steel prices, causing some issues, which might have caused a sell-off during that time. We can compare this to today's news, where Trump is definitely causing some instability because of the trade war with China. Every time there's an announcement of a trade war going well, the market will go up, and vice versa. Market crashes usually build up over time. Prices go up until it's unsustainable, and then it drops, which causes a pop. What causes the market to pop is usually just bigger than average news, usually a small issue in the grand scheme of things. If Trump announces the trade war will continue indefinitely, and China agrees, saying there's no end in sight, this could be the next catalyst to a more than 20% drop. Something big has to set off the crash, especially if every company is overpriced. Let's continue with the clip. Uh, for some time, stocks have been rising at uh, uh, rather rapid rates. Uh, corporate earnings have not been rising. Uh, dividends have not been increasing. And uh, uh, it's not to be unexpected that perhaps a correction of some of those uh, uh, Unusual factors on the upside might occur on the downside. Stock prices were going up, but earnings and dividends weren't going up. This means businesses were not making more profits, while the whole market kept going up. A stock's price should be closely related to how much profits a company can make. When the market goes up regardless of slow earnings, this is when things get overpriced. This is the unusual factor, people overhyping the market, which means stocks can fall as easily as they can go up. This is also true for today's market. Everything seems to be more overpriced by the year. Price to earnings ratios are high. Profits are going up slowly, while the market's price go up rapidly. This is a bad sign and could mean a market crash is coming soon. Here's a chart of American corporate profits since 2010. As we can see, there has been an increase, but it's also very steady. Compare this to the S&P 500. We see how much faster the market is going up. This could be history repeating itself. 
Historically, the S&P 500 has an average P-E ratio of 15. Right now we are on 22, meaning companies in America are priced higher than their profits. A drop could bring them down to 15 again for a fair valuation compared to profits. Let's continue. Well, some observers from time to time say that the stock market is a forecaster of events to come. Can you predict or would you care to take a look at what you think this might be forecasting, the decline? Uh, the stock market has been a good forecaster uh, from time to time in the uh, past. It also has been a rather poor forecaster occasionally. Uh, for example, the last four or five years, the stock market has been booming along and uh, presumably forecasting better business, which has really not materialized. Corporate profits are, are not any better than they were five years ago, but stock prices are 50% uh, higher thereabouts. Uh, so maybe the stock market is really uh, correcting a previous incorrect forecast this time rather than making a new correct one. He goes on to say the market can forecast things, but sometimes it just goes up on hype, meaning it's not always going to be a good forecast. He's saying it's 50-50 sometimes in the markets. Seems to be true again. Our current market has been going up for 11 years now. There has been small blips of 10 to 20 percent, but it's still going up. Does this mean all companies are doing well and profiting? Yes and no. Yes, profits are going up, but not enough to justify the spike. Warren seems to think that the market will always correct itself. What goes up must come down. Even if American companies are doing well, the market can correct itself, meaning we could see a crash in 2020 without real issues in American business. An overpriced market can go down, even if everything's fine. Let's go on with the video. Well, in a nutshell, Mr. Buffett, can you give us uh, your opinion of just exactly what happened? What caused it? Well, there was uh, undoubtedly some force selling the, uh, the week uh, when the stock market hit the news. The previous week, uh, prices had declined about 6% for the week on average. And uh, there was some stock that uh, was forced upon the market both by margin calls from brokers and uh, uh, some that was uh, forced out by in, in improperly uh, secured bank loans. And this in turn set up a self-generating mechanism on the downside for a while, uh, which we may have seen the last of and which we may not have seen the last of. This last part says, no one can predict the markets. We see it going up on hype, likely to go down, but no one knows what's going to happen. We might see this bull market going to 2023. This is not impossible. There's no way to know if the market will crash tomorrow or next year. Buffett is very logical in his thinking when it comes to the markets. But overall, he thinks the stock's price will follow its earnings. He believes when you buy a stock, you're buying a business yourself. A business that continues to profit is a good business. And a company that's worth twice what it should be worth, based on profits, is overpriced. It's as simple as that. Warren has a very simple view on the markets, and he's definitely right about that. We can apply everything he said to today's markets. We can see stock prices are overpriced. Looking at this table of earnings, we see just before the crash, it was 103. And now in 2019, it's 135. This is a 31% increase in earnings in 13 years. How much has the market gone up in the same period? The market has gone up 100%, not counting dividends. Like Warren says, when the prices are up and earnings aren't, the market will correct itself. It's as simple as looking at the P-E ratio. If we stop thinking about stocks for a moment, and think about the business, which is what Warren Buffett tells us to do, a business with a P-E ratio of exactly 10 gives us our money back in exactly 10 years. A P-E ratio of 10 means the business price is 10 times the profits for the past year. So in 10 years, we'll get 10 years of profits, which is the worth of the business price. This is not a bad deal because that's 10% a year. A P-E ratio of 20 would take 20 years to get our money back. Using this simple concepts, we can see our average P-E ratio right now is pretty high. If it goes back down to 15, meaning we pay less money for the same profits, the market would be less risky. This is about a 25% drop, meaning a crash of 25% to 40% might be pretty fair. I'm saving more cash. About half my money is in cash right now, and I plan to invest slowly in the markets as it drops. This is one of the safest ways to invest in a market crash. I have about 130,000 in the markets and 140,000 in cash. My portfolio has 60,000 in index funds, which are still green. This tells me the whole market hasn't crashed, but many of my single stocks are in the red. We have FedEx down 35%, Nvidia down 26%, Activision Blizzard down 25%. The market hasn't recovered from its recent downturn completely. The two Chinese stocks are suffering as well from the trade war. IQ is down 44% and JD is down 21%. My strategy is keeping cash at 50%, maybe as high as 60%, and slowly buying in as things start dropping, with dollar cost averaging. We can buy in the S&P 500 every 10% it drops. For example, buy $10,000 worth every 10% drop. If it goes down to a 50% crash, this will lead to higher profits for us. If I were to buy single stocks at this time, I would pick safer companies like Walmart or McDonald's, companies that would stay alive in a market crash. These are dividend paying companies that have a good history of not dropping during the previous two crashes. I'm making a video on these companies soon, so stay tuned for that. And if you want to see my exact strategy and more, join Monk's Market Mastery, a complete animated course on the stock markets. 
from beginner videos to swing trading and long-term investing. There are never before seen videos now available on my channel. It's 50% off for the first 20 buyers using the link in the description below. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. Keep watching to invest smarter the monk way.